Today's K movie is 1987 When the Day Comes. 1987. It is Korean historical film directed by Chang Jun Hwan, and the film stars an ensemble cast including Kim Yun Seok, Ha Jung Woo, Yu Hye Jin, Kim Tae Ri, Park Hee Sun, and Lee Hee Jun. 1987. 1987 is based on real-life incident in June 10th, 1987, when people took the streets for about 20 days to end the rule of the military regime led by President Chun Doo-hwan. It begins with the torture death of 22-year-old student activist Park jong chol during a police interrogation in January of the year, which became the direct cause of the historic June 10 protest, 60항쟁. Police want to cover up the case by cremating the body as fast as possible, as the death became known through a newspaper report. However, Chief Park, played by Kim yun Seok, the highest police officer in charge of the case, abruptly announces that the student abruptly died of heart failure during police questioning. But this dubious explanation only prompts several conscious individuals who became aware of the torture death while at work to summon their courage to let the world know the truth. Their efforts sparked nationwide pro-democracy protests that began June 10th. The protests changed the tide of modern Korean history by forcing then-President Chun to introduce a set to democratization measures, including a direct presidential election system. The central plot revolves around the tense tug-of-war between figures who try to cover up the death, Chi Park and his subordinate and detective Cho, played by Park Hee-sun, and those who try to unveil the truth, Prosecutor Choi, played by Ha jong woo Han byung Yong, a prison officer played by Yu Hye-jin, and journalist Yoon, played by Lee Hee-jun, except Yeon Hee, Han's niece played by Kim Tae-ri. Uh, most of the characters were inspired from the real-life figures who played an important role in finding the truth behind Park jong chols death. As the story heads towards its inevitable end, we learn how the ordinary citizens, ranging from prison officers to priests and to an opposition figure, are held together by the special bonds they have with each other to achieve democracy. And I think there's a lot of cameos uh, in the film. I think Seol Gyeonggu was, was one of those cameos. This is the director Chang jun wans third feature film after Save the Green Planet, uh, 지구를 지켜라, which came out in 2003, and Hwai, A Monster Boy, in 2013. This film, 1987, 1987, uh, realistically documents one of the most dramatic chapters in modern Korean history while finding as much drama as possible in the story. Music. Information. Everything about Korea. Arirang Arirang. Radio. Another highlight of this film is the lead actor, Kim yun Seok's exceptional performance at Chief Park. He's truly one of the most talented actors of Korea. Uh, Kim yun Seok made his acting debut in 1988 with a streetcar named De- Desire. After many years in theater, he began acting in film and television late in his career, uh, at first appearing in minor roles. I think he told in one of his interviews that he used to have a bar in Busan. That was his uh, major job back then. Then in 2006, he had his breakthrough in Che Dong-un's Tatsa, The High Rollers, with audiences praising his performance in the supporting role as ruthless gambler Agui meaning starving demon in Buddhism. A leading role followed in 2008 with the chaser Chugyeokja. That's, uh, that's the one that made Kim yun Seok widely known. Directed by Na Hong Jin, uh, there is his famous line, Ya, 4885, 4885. No, it's you, 4885. He successfully portrayed the morally ambiguous character of a retired cop-turned-pimp hunting down a serial killer. Played by Ha jong 
who murdered, uh, murdered the call girls due to his importance. The thriller was a critical and commercial hit, becoming one of the classic films in thriller genre. And Kim's excellent performance brought in eight awards for total, made him a major player in the Korean film industry. He moved from one of the finest character actors in the industry into a popular leading actor. He played a middle-aged man following his lifelong dream to play a rock band in The Happy Life. The rural detective trying to capture a legendary prison breaker in Running Total, and a rival Taoist wizard in Chonuchi, which he co starred with Kang Dong Won. In 2010, he reunited with the Chaser co star Ha Jung Woo in Na Hong Jin's second film, The Yellow Sea, Hwang Ae. He once again triumphed in 2012 as his highest movie. Choi dong Dodukdul, The Thieves. It became the second best-selling Korean film of all time. A year later, he continued working with one of Korea's leading directors in Im Sul Ye's family drama film, Southbound, Nam Chok Uro Tweer. He then starred in Hwai, and in, uh, a year later, he starred in a critically acclaimed art house film, Hemu, Sea Fog. Directed by Shim Song Bo. And uh, Shim Song, actually, this movie was produced by Bong Joon Ho. Shim Song Bo was uh, one of Bong Joon Ho's crew members. In 2015, Kim collaborated with director Kwak Kyung Tae in the classified file, Ilgu Bimil. He played a detective cooperating with a shaman played by Yu Hye Jin to find out uh, and save a kidnapped girl. He reunited with Kang Dong Won in The Priest a supernatural thriller by director Chang Jae-hyun. It was a box office hit, attracting 5.4 million won, a million of admissions to cinema. He starred in director Hwang Dong-yup, who is a director creator of Ojingok Games, Squid Game, a historical film The Fortress, Naman Sansong. He also reunited with director Chang Jun-an in 1987, the film we are talking about now another historical film about pro-democratic movement in Korea in 1987. In 2019, he actually made his own movie. He, uh, he had a directorial debut with another child of family drama film. His latest film, which came out this year, Mogadish, was the biggest hit film of 2021. If you haven't watched it, please check it out for me. It was the best Korean film so far this year.